to my channel. My name is Sarah and I have been sharing my weight loss journey here on YouTube since April of 2020. Over the first two years of that journey, I lost 30 pounds through just diet and exercise. And then in August of 2022, I had a bariatric surgical procedure called vertical sleeve gastrectomy or VSG for short. I continue to share the ups and downs of my weight loss journey, including the things that I've learned along the way. So if that sounds like it would be valuable to you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel a lot. And I want to share as much information and helpful tips that I can with you. A big thank you as well to all of my returning subscribers. I appreciate you for being here so much. In today's video, I am sharing with you four practical, legit, weight loss tips that you could start implementing today. There's no planning involved. You can just do these things and they are gonna help you be in a calorie deficit, which will help you lose weight. Now, some of these tips are things that I learned before I had weight loss surgery, because remember, I did lose 30 pounds before I had that procedure. And a lot of it are things that I wish that I would have realized sooner, but have learned as a bariatric patient and I wanted to share those with you because I think they're truly helpful. So tip number four is that drinking calories is really a waste. Whether it's alcohol, juice, soda, when you're trying to lose fat, drinking your calories just seems really, really wasteful. There are tons of zero calorie drink options, the main one being water, super obvious, but you can still have things like, you know, diet soda, you can get those flavor packets that are sugar-free if you don't like the taste of just plain water. There are so many things you can do, but drinking your calories really adds up. And if you're trying to stay in a deficit, I have heard a lot of people say that they don't track their drinks, and that is a big mistake because those calories add up very quickly from drinks, especially if you don't know exactly how much you're drinking. So my suggestion to help with this is actually not to eliminate all of your drinks at once, it's to actually swap them out with zero or lower calorie options first, and then gradually kind of wean yourself off of the full sugar, full calorie versions. I'm a big fan of everything in moderation. So let's say you're having like three sweet teas in a day, try cutting it back to just one and replacing the other two drinks with a no sugar added tea. I think that's a really good way to still get the sweet tea or sugary drink that you want, but still reduce the amount of calories that you're taking in overall. My third tip is that you need more than one measure of success. This is really important because one of those hard truths when you are trying to lose weight is that the scale is just not going to be your friend all the time. I'll actually take that one step further and say that the scale is not supposed to be your friend all the time. It is supposed to be a measure of data, but a lot of us and myself included in the past tend to get really emotionally bound by that number on the scale. And that's just not a great way to keep yourself on track when you're trying to lose weight. Taking a little bit of a more scientific approach to the type of data that you're using to grade your progress as you're trying to lose fat is to have multiple data points so that you can kind of compare and contrast and use that data to figure out what you need to improve on or what needs to stay the same or what just needs to stay consistent and you need to keep doing. I'm going to suggest two different forms of progress measurement. Number one is take a picture of yourself in your tightest fitting outfit. And I mean tight, like it borderline either doesn't fit you or it's just barely fitting you. Once a month or every two weeks, take a picture of yourself in that same outfit. The way that your clothes feel is a really, really good indicator of fat loss, especially when the scale isn't moving. The other thing that you can do is take your measurements. And I don't think this has to be like a crazy activity. In my experience, I do best when I just measure kind of one side of my body. So I'll measure my right arm, my right leg, and then my hips and my chest. 
That's it. You don't have to overcomplicate it or go crazy. But taking those measurements once a month may show you things that the scale doesn't. And that can be a really big mental boost as you are trying to lose weight. Tip number two is to balance your diet so that you are not feeling deprived. I have talked about this a lot on my channel, even before I had my bariatric surgery. When I reflect on all of the different diets that I've done over the years, I think they all really focused on what I could not eat versus what I could eat. The restriction of certain foods, and in most cases it's over restriction, really felt more like a punishment instead of a lifestyle change. The more I told myself that I wasn't allowed to have something, the more I wanted whatever that thing was, be it candy, chips, chocolate, whatever, you name it. If I told myself I couldn't have it or shouldn't have it, I automatically would not stop thinking about it. Now, one thing I will say here is that weight loss surgery really has taught me how to eat properly. Whereas before I would restrict, restrict, restrict to the point where I binged and binged and binged. Now I know that I can have the foods that I like in moderation. Instead of eating a whole package of Oreos, I eat two. And no, for the record, two Oreos does not fill me up. It's just, I know that's enough. I get that satisfaction that I got to have a little treat and I don't do it all the time. A big part of my weight maintenance now is that I need to be balanced and I follow what I've heard called the 80-20 rule where I eat more nutritious foods 80% of the time and 20% of the time I can have a little treat or a little snack. And I don't find myself obsessing over them because I told myself, no, I can't have that. And for me, and if you're a bariatric patient as well, that 80% will also be more protein focused. So just in general, you're gonna be more full. But finding little ways to incorporate those foods into your everyday life is not only gonna help you sustainably lose weight, it's gonna help you sustainably maintain it once you're past your weight loss phase. I also think that eating this way has really, really helped me eliminate a lot of what is often referred to as food noise, where you're just thinking about food frequently. And I think, you know, knowing that if I wanted a cookie or a, you know, a little single size bag of potato chips, I can have that and it's not a punishment. And the number one tip that I have for you, it's very practical, is understand that you do have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. It really doesn't matter what kind of diet or lifestyle that you follow. The reason that you will lose weight is because you are in a calorie deficit one way or the other. I mean, think about it. That's really why weight loss surgery is effective in the first place because you can only eat, especially for that first six months to a year, a very low amount of calories. Just reducing your stomach size on its own doesn't magically do anything. You have to be in a calorie deficit to lose the weight. The same goes even if you're not a bariatric patient. I feel like before I had surgery, I gave myself an awful lot of excuses and leeway to just go completely off the rails and eat whatever I wanted on any given day. I would use excuses like I'm stressed, I'm sad, I'm bored, I'm watching a movie, I'm doing this, and a lot of the activities that I did revolved around what I was gonna eat. So even though I may have thought I was eating in a calorie deficit, I really probably wasn't because I would have these little mini like treat myself or sometimes they were they were not mini sometimes they were quite big where I would just go completely buck wild and eat whatever I wanted and then the next day I would be like well I'm in a calorie deficit today that's not how it works right I think that not being honest with myself about what I was eating every single day also contributed to that cycle of shame that kept me stuck in my binge eating disorder for the longest longest time I really just felt so ashamed Shamed for my lack of accountability for myself. So to keep yourself in a calorie deficit, you're gonna have to track your calories. Now
Now, I'm not saying that you have to track calories forever, but there are literally a million apps out there. Use that calorie tracker and don't be afraid to experiment with your calories if you find that you're not losing consistently. Sometimes you may have to adjust your calories either a little bit less or a little bit more, but don't be afraid of experimenting You know, every couple of weeks. I know a lot of people feel like tracking calories is too much work or too much effort, but it's important to really understand how much you are eating in the first place. And that's gonna include if you're drinking those, you know, high calorie beverages, like I mentioned earlier, you need to track those too. And you need to know how much you're drinking because otherwise you really don't know how many calories you're actually consuming in a day. Eat your normal foods on your normal schedule for like two weeks and just see how much you're actually eating and then you can just kind of cut back from there and you don't have to track forever. I still track because I like the accountability and I like seeing what I eat and I also have protein goals that I need to meet. I do keep a good log of those, but no matter how you're trying to lose weight, even if it's just you know a few pounds or a, or a significant amount of weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. There's no way around it. That's also gonna include when you go out to eat. Most restaurants have the nutrition information for the meals available on their website, so you need to pull that up too. Now don't go overboard and don't go crazy and don't beat yourself up based on the number of calories you're consuming. Remember, it's data. And then when you're ready to start really focusing on losing fat, you can use that data as a way to adjust your calories down. And sometimes that could be as much as like you know, one of those sugary beverages. I think a bottle of Coca-Cola is like 200 calories. Cut that out, you're already in a 200 calorie deficit and you could eat the rest of the food that you eat the rest of the day. Following that 80-20 rule, right? Where 80% of the time you're eating more nutritious foods and then 20% of the time you get to eat a little snacky snack. It's up to you. But there's a lot of ways that you can be in a calorie deficit without feeling like you're torturing yourself. And a little bonus tip here, don't feel like you have to eat healthy foods just because it's considered a healthy food. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna eat chicken, broccoli, and rice. You don't have to eat chicken, broccoli, and rice every day to be in a calorie deficit. Find foods that are nutritious that you actually enjoy and worry about those. Don't worry about eating things that you don't like. Good example for me in the past was brown rice. I always would swap out brown rice because it is more nutritious than regular white rice. But here's the thing, I don't like brown rice. So I would feel frustrated and not satisfied at my meal and that would cause me problems with eating the rest of the day. So don't do that. Find the foods that you actually enjoy to eat, focus on those to keep you in the calorie deficit. I hope you found these tips helpful. Let me know if there are any that you're gonna start trying right away. And I would love to see a little carrot emoji in the comments below if you made it this far in the video. Now, if you have any tips that you would like to share for staying in a calorie deficit or making food swaps or anything like that, go ahead and comment those as well. And on your way down to the comments, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the video a lot. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you very much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.